Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at DoorDash. Um, company recently IPO'd and it's uh, been doing pretty well recently in the market. So I thought we'd take a look at it and just kind of see uh, what's really priced into their, their current valuation. So um, we're just going to do a standard DCF here and I've copied over uh, income statement, the little bit of a balance sheet and statement of cash flows that they provide, um, and then some of the key stats that they have as well. All of this comes from uh, their S1 filing. Let me show you how to pull that up real quick. So you're gonna head on over to sec.gov, go to more search options, and then you can type in dash right here. That's their uh, stock ticker. Go ahead and click okay. And then you can pull their most recent S1, um, S1 slash A amended. That'll be kind of their final one um, or the 424 B4 will also be the final uh, S1 as well. So in here, you could read through this uh, a lot of interesting so it'll show initial offering price 102 um, the banks were getting 250 a share so uh, banks got paid 80 million dollars to ipo this it will show you kind of the lead banks here so goldman sachs was lead left followed by jp morgan and then a handful of other um, smaller equity pieces given out as well there but if we scroll down here you'll see a table of contents and you could go selected consolidated financial data and it'll have um, it'll usually have an income statement in this one and then there will be kind of a balance sheet usually, um, which is in here somewhere. Um, yeah, it's just like very high level. Nothing really ties out. You really have to kind of wait for their first um, like 10Q to come out for to get a better idea of their balance sheet. And then there will be a very small cash flow statement um, that's just at the aggregate level change in operating, financing, and investing activities. Um, but I've already copied all of this over and we're going to go ahead and uh, just kind of forecast out 10 years and come back to a current price and see kind of what they're trading at based off that. Um, so we can see historically, you know, revenue um, has been growing like crazy. Now the question is, can that maintain or stay? Um, I, I don't know. I think the pandemic has really supercharged their growth, to be honest. A lot of people now sitting at home ordering delivery as opposed to going out on a Friday night. Um, so I actually wouldn't expect this to be um, significantly higher in 2021. If anything, I might think top line revenue might decrease. And if we look at in the rest one, they say um, market share, right? So currently they're claiming they have 50% of the market share based off that, um, you know, it's going to be hard, right? You can continue to take market share. Sure. So you could, in theory, if you had a hundred percent, you could double your revenue and then it would come down to just pricing. Um, can you take more from the restaurants or can you have another subscription service of some sort with unlimited delivery, things of that nature. So that's kind of the next phase, I think for DoorDash, I think you'll be, um, it'll be hard for them to get too much higher than 50% market share, especially with Uber really focusing on this now. Um, but we'll see. So I think, Honestly, I don't think they're going to continue growing 200% a year. Um, you know, from 2018 to now, they've went from 17% to 50%. So they've already uh, basically quadrupled, um, which is reflective here in their growth, right? From 300. I mean, their revenue's gone up 10x um, and they've quadrupled their market share. So uh, market's been growing, but I think it's going to be um, declining from here. Um, so I think. You know, I mean, it, it's tough to say really, but I don't, I don't see another 200% growth in their future. I'm seeing maybe 50% and then I'm going to see them drop in uh, 5% a year. And I think that's still incredibly aggressive and bullish on the food delivery network. And I don't even think that this is realistic. Um, you know, you already have 50% of the market. You're not going to be able to keep uh, growing at this clip without taking significant market share. And Uber is kind of all in on this um, at this point, it seems, with the divesting their autonomous vehicles. So they're really just looking at ride hailing and delivery. And, you know, some people make the argument, oh, DoorDash is now doing last mile delivery for like Best Buy or whoever, whatever different retailers. And like, yeah, they are. But the last mile delivery is the most expensive part of the delivery kind of model. And that's why Amazon doesn't you know, they've contracted it out. Um, so I don't know, it'll be interesting. Um, it looks like COGS, they've actually got that under control pretty well. Um, they've seen a lot of reduction there. We'll just hold that constant for now. SGNA, I would expect this to actually keep going down, especially as revenue grows. Um, 
until they get to somewhere in like the 40% range, and then we'll just hold it off. CapEx. Um, yeah, I mean, as revenue grows, right, CapEx is going to probably stay flat or decrease a little bit just because you're not going to need as much CapEx. Um, but we'll see. I'll link all this up real quick. Oops. This way, once we link everything in, it'll flow through and we can kind of see what we're getting. Um, depreciation. I mean, I like sticking around like 80%. Oops. I like to think that, you know, you're going to be depreciating, but you're going to have growth CapEx. So you're still, you know, your depreciation is never going to equal your CapEx. Otherwise, you're just kind of doing maintenance CapEx. Um, depreciation amount, that's just going to be times revenue. Oh, oops, actually not times revenue. My bad. Times um, CapEx. There we go. Their networking capital is a little wonky and don't really have a good picture of how to calculate it. So this is kind of a best approximation based off their cash flow statement. Um, but I'm actually going to have this increase at 1%. Um, let's do that until they kind of get to a position where, um, and then we'll just hold it there. And that should, where they're using their ability um, to kind of finance in their favor with suppliers. Um, so now let's go ahead and just link everything up real quick, and then we should be able to quickly get a valuation here and see. Yeah, I mean, that's that's crazy. You're not going from $3 billion to $4 billion, all the way up to $30 billion. Yeah, I mean, there's no way. This is, um, I think, even 50% is too high. Let's start this at 25%. Um, and then we'll just tie this off at 5%. We'll see. Um, that might still be a bit aggressive. Let's go ahead and link this up. I mean, obviously, at some point, they need to start generating um, cash flow. Otherwise, they're not going to be around for too long. But hopefully, the margin improvements we're giving them, um, they should be able to do that. DNA is just going to link down here. That should be there we go so now you're getting yeah you're getting a positive cash flow in a couple of years which i think is probably fair um and this actually is what needs to change let's do this equals here times Yeah, I mean, you're not going to get to those kind of numbers down there. Um, so actually, let me. We'll just kind of regress that back towards the mean. You're not going to have these crazy spikes in networking capital. Um, it should be about zero to be honest uh eventually um but yeah i mean something like that and if we come over here and just check real quick what kind of valuation this is giving us we'll say 10 percent cost capital that's the return we want um three percent terminal growth rate present value of the terminal value four billion equity value Enterprise value of about six billion net debt. I think I actually have this uh, saved over here. So that should actually be subtracted. So you're saying about a four point six billion dollar equity value, um, and kind of depending on how you sensitize this, right? If you lower your required cost of capital, you get eight um, percent. To eight percent, you know, you get it get up to a nine and a half billion um, now just for to humor ourselves let's go see what DoorDash is currently trading at 
I believe they're like 50 billion. Not Tilray. That's there we go. DoorDash. 50 billion. Uh -huh. I mean, to get a 50 billion dollar valuation, right? You're gonna have to come back up here to. But you're gonna have to assume it's 50 percent. I mean, yeah, you have to assume that 50% growth rate next year and then slowly regressing to 30%. You have to believe they're going to go from $3 billion in revenue to $57 billion in revenue just delivering um, food. And I mean, I think if we were to like, let's see, does this show revenue on here? No, but we can, um, what's, what's FedEx public? FDX, okay look because some people are gonna make the argument oh no they're gonna transition into to delivering x y and z but let's look at i don't know what fedex's revenue is but let's look uh statement of income so this is three months ended do they have the nine month ended um i'll just go to their most recent k it's probably easier then trying to extrapolate out because they're probably pretty seasonal business. Okay, come on, FedEx. Financial statements, there we go. 106. Net income, is this revenue? Revenue, 70 billion in revenue. So we're expecting DoorDash in the next 10 years to basically be the same size as FedEx and they're gonna deliver food only. Um, I don't know. And yeah, sure, by then FedEx should be, I don't know, 80, 90 billion in sales probably revenue um, so we're saying they're gonna be half the size of FedEx on a shipping basis for last mile delivery of food and potentially random items from Target I don't know that that seems hard-pressed to me um, I think if you came back here said you know be seven billion dollar food delivery company um, by 2030 valued you know somewhere from probably three to ten billion um i think that's probably reasonable and if we look at what was their ipo price 102 so they ipo'd on a valuation of roughly i mean 32 billion that's crazy um they still value ipo'd with a huge 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 valuation for what they are i mean they're bleeding cash, um, right? They lost half a billion dollars. Um, and sure, that, like, I mean, they got to scale back the SGNA, which, I mean, this model's pretty aggressive um, with just margin control. And I think the true test will be 2021. Um, I think once uh, the vaccines rolled out and things have quote unquote returned to normal by next summer um, or by next fall, is DoorDash still bringing in the volume that it is this year? Uh, we'll see. Um, but I think that'll be kind of the proving ground. And then by 2022, we should know was COVID just a, a benefactor to it um, with everyone being locked down or is this actually a business model that's gonna last into the future? Um, my guess is it's not, but we'll see. So there you go. My, my take on this, this company is $10, $10 billion company. Um, that's my take. I, I wouldn't pay current levels on this. Um, this thing's just asking to, to come crashing down if things don't go 100% perfect. So thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it below. If there's any other companies you'd like me to take a look at, I'm happy to do so and kind of give my, my opinion on it. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you found this useful. Have a good one.